Lumps and hollows after Juvederm. Any suggestions? Had Juvederm injected two days ago in tear troughs. I look haggard. Have lumps on eyes and skin on cheeks and eyes looks deflated. My doctor reassures me that it will settle, but I'm really down and upset at the minute. Is this normal? Should I give it more time? Thank you for your question. You stated in your question that you had Juvederm injected under your eyes and that you're concerned about some lumps and the appearance of hollows and that your cheeks look sunken. And re you've reached out to your doctor who, say, who told you that it's important to let it settle. And of course you are very concerned about your appearance and you've submitted photos uh, to help support your question. Well, I can certainly assist you with your question. I'm a board-certified cosmetic surgeon and fellowship-trained oculofacial plastic surgeon. Uh, the oculofacial plastic surgery fellowship training is after training first in eye surgery and specializing in cosmetic and reconstructive surgery of the eye area. So you can imagine I have a lot of experience uh, practicing for over 20 years in Manhattan and Long Island with helping people improve the appearance of their eyes. So this is a type of situation I come across a lot and it is n in no way a criticism of your doctor but I think one of the things that is a challenge in your situation and this is only limited based on the photos you submitted is that you're dealing with uh, several issues concurrently and the under eye hollow was obviously the issue that bothered you the most that brought you to the doctor who then addressed that specific issue. When people come to our practice, one of the things that I do is I, I go down a list of their priorities and our consultations are always, have, we take a lot of time. You know, this is one of the most important things about helping people is to hear the problems and understand the context and, and many times it, a lot of, when one looks at themselves and they look at an area very critically, they often lose the forest for the trees. In other words, they look at something, or and we, we all do this, we look at something we don't like, we concentrate on it, and it magnifies. And now that you've had that somewhat addressed, now you're looking at the, the big picture. So when people come with concerns about under eye hollowing, we have to first define what is the cause. Is it a genetic thing or is it a, uh, is it a facial aging or is it both? You know, when I te talk to my patients about facial aging, I explain that there's volume loss, bone, muscle, and fat. And it's not limited to the one area you're looking at it. It's more global throughout the face. And then there's sagging. So in a situation like yours, I've been able to help a lot of patients by also looking at the frame around the eye, the cheekbones, and the, the space around the eye. And so a lot of times we will approach this problem in a couple of different ways. One is to do similarly to as what your doctor did, is to use a filler such as Restylane, like, um, which I prefer for the under eye hollows, and I will combine that with a skin quality improvement treatment called platelet-rich plasma. Now I'm saying that because when I look at your, your, your photos, your skin looks relatively fine and thin. And so I will also identify that for the patient and have them consider that as a way to synergize between the volume correction and the skin quality. Now platelet-rich plasma is derived from your own blood and it contains the healing and growth factors necessary for wound healing. And in our practice we use it a lot and we've been able to help people with skin quality. Now on top of that, I also ask people to take a step back, and I often take pictures and show them, that the cheeks, what you describe as sunken, is probably also an opportunity to improve the, rela the under eye hollowing. You see, when you look at the side view or you look from the front, you can see that there's a flattening effect on the, the area at the eyelid to cheek junction, which is kind of a, a ledge. So you can imagine that putting a little volume filler on that ledge, it can, it can be difficult to make it look really, really good. So in some patients, we offer a procedure called a Y-lift. 
and not necessarily the entire lift where we use a filler such as Juvederm, Ultra Plus, or, uh, or, 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 or Voluma, and we place it in the cheekbone in a very specific method. Um, and we don't necessarily do the whole thing, such as the jawline and everything else, but at least do a cheek lift. And a cheek lift with the eye under eye hollow being corrected is a very nice combination. So I think that your doctor is on the right track, certainly by advising you to wait, because at the beginning it isn't unusual, especially with th people with thin skin, to have these types of lumps. In our practice, we see our patients after two weeks to reassess, and I, I, I wait the two weeks because that's how long it takes for the material to kind of settle and for the body and the muscles to kind of massage the material in a way into its contour, and that's an opportunity then to maybe enhance or add. But in, on top of that, think about how the cheeks, if the cheeks have a role in this overall look, and that there may be opportunity to improve the appearance of your eyes by enhancing the cheeks. So I think you should um, speak to your doctor who performed this procedure about this type of option and learn more about figuring out how to get the whole area to look good instead of just the isolated area, the tear trough. Because you might see that the, if your doctor took before and after pictures that there is an improvement, but no one looks at you and says, oh, your tear troughs look really good today. They look at you and say, you look good today. And so we have to kind of think of the whole picture and not just the li little areas we focus on. So I hope that was helpful. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you for your question.